Hi there everyone, today I'm reviewing The Spear, The Scroll and The Pebble, How the Greek City-State Developed as a Male Warrior Citizen Collective, by Richard A. Billows. So Professor Richard A. Billows is Professor of History at Columbia University, and in this book he reviews the form and function of the Greek City-State, which established the modern ways of society as we know it. Drawing upon the usual first-hand sources that you know, Plato, Aristotle, Herodotus, Homer, Diodorus, but also challenging some established perspectives in this book. Billows argues that the Greek city-states' developments of mass literacy, citizen warrior armies, and political systems formed the city-state and the beginnings of Western civilization as we know it. The title is also important to dissect from the outset. We start with the spear, where the book examines how citizens took on the role of defence for their state, but also an important part of investiture, where such a citizen demanded, through his involvement in the defence of the city, um, a say in political decision making. Whether that's limited to fewer citizen, citizens excuse me, in the state, as in Sparta, or the democratic approach of Athens. The pebble represents the growth of collective political systems, again, such as oligarchy in Sparta or democracy in Athens, although Billows argues that these systems are actually far more alike than has been commonly illustrated and argued. For example, although many of the warriors of the respective states have a vote, it was just obviously fewer in Sparta than Athens. So even where it's oligarchic, they still had this kind of collective decision-making taking place. The scroll represents literacy and the adoption of the alphabet, the crucial bridge between different peoples within and outside of society, and the city-state itself perhaps. Inheriting the alphabet from the Phoenicians, sharing of information for trade, politics, law and other institutions, ensured that civilization and the written word began to bind all the strata of society. Billows emphasises that literacy was far more widespread than has been commonly acknowledged, and was therefore important for this collective decision-making in terms of things like politics, like I mentioned above. So these three phenomena, the spear, the scroll and the pebble, tie together a military male collective, they're literate, no matter the, their role in society. They, there's also that of influential decision makers or voters being part of the hoplite phalanx that fought in war and defended the city-state. And these military forces wanted a say in decision making of their polis. And so through voting systems, whether that be vocal in Sparta, for example, or the pebble, um, in Athens, where voters would literally put a pebble in to declare their vote, were able to obtain rights. So these developments are what's crucial for the city-state, this book argues. And unsurprisingly, it's quite a scholarly book. And before looking at the aforementioned three areas, um, the book kind of gives a background of the early city-state formation and the economic underpinnings of society. And this section is admittedly fairly dry, even for someone like me who's really into it. And to be honest, the whole book is very much for those very invested in the, this kind of subject. It comes across as an academic work, first and foremost. But it is detailed and accurate. It doesn't shy away from Greek terms or knowledge, even of kind of more niche subjects in the context of this book, such as hoplite warfare. It was talk about sunas bismos, I'm probably butchering the pronunciation which means shields together, for example, and kind of talks a bit about that. But despite sometimes being dry, it is enjoyable and it does raise uh, really interesting questions, such as whether oligarchy in Sparta and democracy in Athens were all that different, as I've mentioned, or the question of whether literacy was really that widespread. And for the latter, the book challenges the assertion that absence of evidence is not evidence of absence but also the scant evidence is considered, such as a tale of Mycalesos, um, a, a town that Thucydides mentions, where boys in a school were massacred by 
marauding Thracians. And Thucydides happens to mention that this was the larger of the schools in the area, implying therefore that there's at least two. But Mycolessos is only a rural town. And so it having two schools suggests that actually it was pretty widespread, potentially, that, you know, even a smaller place like Mycolessos has two, maybe even more schools. So education is actually more widespread than perhaps we have a lot of evidence for. The book is dense and sometimes impressive, even though it's clocking in about two, just under 200 pages, the main text. Um, in arguing for a male warrior citizen collective, it didn't even need to focus too much on Sparta, which actually I think would have been a mistake since the criticism probably levelled at it would be that Sparta is different to many other city-states. Um, and that kind of raises <laughs> its own questions and debates of its own. Instead, even the outliers such as Sparta are uh, illustrated to have more commonalities with other states, and I've already mentioned some of that. Um, and clearly, Athens herself often thought to be a bastion of kind of progression compared to many other um, city-states, which it, you know, it definitely was in many regards. But perhaps it places a bit too much credit, and perhaps scholars have kind of placed a bit too much credit that these weren't changes happening across you know, the more rural areas as well as the kind of key players like Sp Sparta and Athens, which obviously are focused on so much due to the, our texts. Clearly, change had to occur all over the Greek world to make so much progress compared to a lot of ancient, other ancient civilizations. And much of it was indeed attributable to Athens, but it's also the ancient Greek worlds made up of more of that than that. You know, you've got traders, farmers and rural communities, many smaller and scattered or on the Greek islands. And these strata of society also had to play a role in the formation of the Greek city-state. Otherwise, you know, it would have just happened in Athens, although you could argue that most change ha did happen in Athens. But Billows really elucidates this kind of aspect where actually we need to think about some of the smaller places too. Autarkia, or the taking of personal responsibility, was considered important by citizens, and perhaps that's partly why there was such deep change. It was actually almost on an individual level as well, even though collective communities w was a kind of key um, angle to think of this in. Instead of only the highest strata of society accessing high-level thinking of sort of, um, you know, polymaths and philosophers and so on, those with less means at their disposal could still read, arguably. They could access and take responsibility, they could have self-involvement in their city-state and what it's doing, and engage with philosophical, literal and historic works. And this probably also influenced many of the trends we saw in military politics and education. So in terms of final score for this book, it is necessarily compact and refined in its arguments. And for sure I think some scholars will disagree with some of the points. It's, it's definitely kind of challenging in that regard in some ways but the arguments are really streamlined and, and clear which I think is great for the kind of more general reader like me. I myself was skeptical on the occasional point but under I think it was actually under 190 pages maybe it sometimes leaves itself open for critique by being that streamlined but I think Billows really had a clear and refined line of reasoning and it was edited really well which made it a lot easier to read despite you know, probably being dry for some people. So for that, and for those interested, The Spear, the Scroll and the Pebble is a really great read about the formation and influence of the male citizen in the ancient Greek city-state. But it's definitely more one for the passionate student of the topic in <laughs> ancient Greek history, and, you know, it's going to be a bit dry for some, but for those interested, this is a really good book. I, I'm going to give it an 8 out of 10. It's very strong, it's refined, it's clear, and it you know, kind of links it all really nicely. So it's worth a read. Um, I'll be reviewing many more ancient history books besides much more. So thanks for watching and don't forget to like and subscribe. Cheers.